Welcome back to Out of the Blue. I'm Andrew Ottman. The latest edition of MTSU Magazine has just been released, and our cover story highlights the 50th anniversary of the opening of Murphy Center, the iconic multi-purpose facility that is the centerpiece for so many memories, from high school and college basketball games and commencements, community events, and classic concerts. University archivist Donna Baker joins us to talk about the legacy and future of this important building. Donna, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Your first time on Out of the Blue. I know, there's first for everything. And we're making history by that, right? Oh. Okay, you all right, know all, right. That all, right. all right, all right, all right, all right, too, <laughs> too easy. You are the university archivist. Describe that job and what do you do? There are many sorts of archivists in the world. They maybe do music, like we do here at the Center for Popular Music. Or there might be political, like my colleague at the Gore Center, who mm -hmm. takes care of Albert Gore Sr.'s papers, Bart Gordon's, Jim Fries, um, or collections that are governmental, like we see at Rutherford County Archives. A university archivist is specifically tasked with taking care of the institutional memory of whatever university they're working at. Mm -hmm. I am the first person to do that at MTSU. Now that doesn't mean necessarily nobody else was collecting those materials, but in 2011, during our centennial, the president, uh, Sidney McPhee, decided that he needed a university archivist. And I landed at the Gore Center on Halloween of that year. <laughs> and here you are. And here I am. Well, it, it's very important. You mentioned the centennial, so many events in the university and documenting that history so vital to uh, the public service we put forth, make sure that folks understand what we do. And one of the things that we're celebrating, we talked about this in the intro, was this is the 50th anniversary of Murphy Center. So you're playing a huge role in that. Talk a little bit about how you're guiding that commemoration. Sure. Because I have the records, in about 2012, student programming transferred all of their paper records to me, as is appropriate and as part of my job. Mm -hmm. um, they, they digitized them, but then they gave me the original pieces. And what came with that was six beautiful boxes of contracts for wow. all the acts who have played at Murphy Center. So I have a wonderful archive full of that material that I can go back and say, oh, this happened, and this is what they asked for, and uh, this is what the ticket might have looked like, or the backstage passes. It's mostly legalese, mm -hmm. but it's a lot of good information. Well, let's take a step back for a second. In 1972, when Murphy Center opened, we were the biggest indoor arena, really, in the greater Nashville area. So what did that mean in terms of the type of acts that we would receive? First, you know, acts didn't know that we were here. Murphy Center kind of had a little bit of a slow start, but once Harold Smith, who was the program director at the time, kind of figured out how to do it, he knew he had to get big acts. And once he did it, everybody would want to come to Murphy Center, and they did. Elvis was the point. He was the linchpin for everything that we were trying to do. Mm -hmm. And Elvis has played at Murphy Center five times. He had like four in a row, sellout, that wow. stood as a record until Garth Brooks broke it during his amazing run at Murphy Center. When Harold Smith got Elvis, that was it. Mm -hmm. We could ask for any artist and almost get them instantaneously. Because there really wasn't anything like that in Nashville. That arena was just remarkable for the area. So talk about really briefly some of the acts that we, that we saw. We've had, of course, Elvis, Garth Brooks, um, Alabama played here a lot. You could see kind of that country music 80s trend mm -hmm. at Murphy Center because Alabama and the Oak Ridge Boys. Elton John has been here several times. Mm -hmm. Tina Turner as well. Billy Joel has been here, yes. And of course, Charlie Daniels. Charlie Daniels has had a long history with this university and not with, just with the Daniels Center. The second volunteer jam was shot here. It was referred to as the first Southern rock concert ever um, on film. And of course, that was a big success, and it's one of his lasting legacies. More modern acts, Ludacris has been here. Mm -hmm. Kanye, the aforementioned Kanye, has been mm -hmm. here. It's not just that you know, heyday of the 80s, mm -hmm. before the outdoor arenas were built, and they kind of stole our thunder a little bit. Mm -hmm. We had those wonderful big acts, stadium rockers, that, that went on to be known forever as stadium rockers. They were all coming to Murphy Center. Yeah, it's, it's really incredible when you see that, that roster of acts. Elvis recorded one of his live albums here. I think the Judd's Farewell concert was at Murphy Center, nationally televised on NBC. I mean, so many pivotal moments. And I read this in the Tennessean, 
that one of those concerts that attracted so many people also attracted Phil Bredesen, who at that time was the mayor of Nashville, sitting in our audience at Murphy Center, and he goes, why doesn't Nashville have a Murphy Center? And that, what, that really kind of, he then came back to Nashville and said, I'm gonna build an arena in downtown Nashville, and that sort of began the Nashville run of those concerts. But for that time, we were golden, right? Absolutely. The building was, of course, more than just entertainment. It was a multi, it is a multi-purpose center. Talk about some of the other uses of Murphy Center. When this began, the idea of Murphy Center as we know it began when Quill Cope was our president. This idea of we need a place to have commencement, we need a place to do more community, we definitely need more for our physical education and our athletics to kind of home, be a home mm -hmm. base for that. It was to be student first, mm -hmm. as always at MTSU. So again, those classrooms and places to do um, physical education as well as our athletics. Community banquets. We had a banquet here at Murphy Center for Robert Scales, known in the community as T90 Scales. So a, a African-American activist and community member there was a banquet for him on the floor of Murphy Center. Wow. And it, I'm like, what? So all of these wonderful community uses. We now, of course, have the basketball, the high school basketball tournament here. Yes. Statewide, the, the, statewide. The, the high school statewide championship. Statewide, we have commencements, uh, yes. exercises from all the high schools. So that's an, a wonderful opportunity for recruitment. Mm -hmm. Not that the concerts weren't, because again, if you were a kid and you were coming to a show, Again, our students got first dibs, but then the community was welcome to come. And if that was your first experience with MTSU, wouldn't that be a good impetus to come back and actually attend? Our alums talk about it all the time. And of course, it is the, the home of the Blue Raider basketball teams, men yes. and women, and uh, so many great memories. We had undefeated regular home seasons just this last uh, year at Murphy Center, and it was really the power of that arena that, that captivated that big investments in this 50th year of the building. A company called Sage Glass is putting in new glass in the glass house. What is that gonna to do to the place? It is going to completely change the look of Murphy Center. It's still gonna be the glass house, but the ability to have um, a more efficient Murphy Center, mm -hmm. to have a more friendly lighting for our, our patrons who come to Murphy Center for whatever event. Mm -hmm. All of those things are part of this package for the new glass that's it, going it, in. It is not just ordinary glass. I mean, so much technology going this can manage the temperature, as you said, the, the, uh, the density of how much light comes in. So we'll be able to finally control some of those hot spots. There's so much we could talk about about this building, but the actual anniversary, of course, December 11th of this year, we played Vanderbilt the men's team did, and I know we're looking for a commemorative game for that as well. Uh, you're doing something special in the track area around that that will debut this, this basketball season. Talk about that. What we're trying to create is a little bit of what would be a museum of Murphy Center. So starting with the very beginning, groundbreaking of the building, um, kind of the early conceptual ideas of the building, to present the games, the meets, the concerts, the, the highlights of the building, both as a functional building and as what it has symbolically been for so many of our students, that's what we're going to try to put into a timeline that goes all the way around. It'll be a walking tour. It's going to be a walking tour of the building. And of course, we just recently had the Jack Harlow concert, uh, a very popular rising uh, rapper who really captivated and packed the house again. The house. And it was another reminder that the Murphy Center still's got it, right? Absolutely. We'd love to see more. It's it's everything in time. Donna Baker, the university archivist, and now making sure we remember the history of Murphy Center. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.